I'm going to race through this. I'm going to race through this video so you don't have to like subject yourself to too much talking by me. Enough of that. First off, I don't know if you've ever seen that. I'm Seth Gibson right there. Is it? It was a hot August day. 20 something years ago, a long time ago, and a big buck, big male deer was hit by a car. And I kept looking at him driving by over the course of a week, and finally it's like, enough is enough. Um, Want to get the height off him. So I, I carried him home and sat him in the yard. My daughter was perched in a lawn chair with like a little scuba mask on because it was going to be gross. I mean, this deer was bloated. Knife right to the gut. And I wasn't careful to, to not open the body cavity. I knew there's no way it was going to be good in any way. So I just for effect, poo, and all of a sudden, poo, green, nasty goo all over the place, big explosion, a lot of stink. But long story short, I was able to get the hide off that deer, clean it so it wasn't stinky anymore, and then use tendons. You can see like the little, little tendons end sticking out there from that same deer stitched together this uh, nice quiver. And so it worked out. And this is all natural. I made paint from ground charcoal, and then if you can see it, this little thunderbird, that's from mulberry. And so this is 100% organic quiver. Big, big for a bat quiver, but it makes a nice storage kind of a thing. Okay, on to bows. Let's see here. I have this one. You've seen it before, and I've been kind of laying low, really video-wise, since I, I send you back this thing, it's got to it's got to cure. It's got to dry, at least another month, maybe a month and a week. But you can see it's starting to go into reflex. A consequence of seeing you backing is, I didn't bend this, but a lot of times if you have a thin bow and you send you back it, just from the leverage and the drawing of the sinew, it's going to go into recurve, which is very very nice. Uh, arrowheads. Let's talk arrowheads. I wound up buying two backstrap sinew bundles. They're, they're kind of sheets on eBay. Paid $14 for two that were, one was I think 23 inches and one was 21 inches. Plenty long enough to do that spiral wrap when you're, look at how that spiraled around there. Do a you're doing laps around this feather to stick it down. Plenty long enough to do that spiral wrap on fletching, but I purchased it to make a sinew bowstring for this one. This needs a sinew bowstring. Yep. Now, when you go to eBay, you're going to see people selling elk backstrap um, sinew bundles and white-tailed deer and and whatever American bison, any animal that has a backbone and can run around on, on bony legs, has um, backstrap sinew. If you get white tail, let's say, over 20 inches long, don't pay more than $7 a piece for them. You can get them for a $7 a piece. There was one fellow that was selling a single one, same size as the two I bought, $36. That was excessive. Arrowheads. Let's talk arrowheads. Give credit where credit is due. If you go to Facebook, Warpath Archery. My man G, beautiful, beautiful arrowhead maker. Makes stone knives, good at that, makes bows, makes arrows. Very skilled artisan, good guy. When you knock a big flake off of a core, it would start off curved. Look how straight that is. That's nice, how thin, precise. Do check, if you're gonna hunt with these things, the local laws regarding width. Michigan, I forget, inch and a quarter wide, I don't know, I'd have to look. But in, we're, in states where you are allowed to use stone points, I'm sure that there are some states you're not allowed to, but the states you are, just make sure that the points you get so you don't get ticketed are, are of legal width. Okay, that's Warpath Archery, Warpath Archery Facebook. The next is Cody Stemmler of Stones and Bones Primitive Arts. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? This is impossible. The thin, The thinness, it's like a strip of cardboard just beautifully made I don't know if you can see it but the flakes that he driv drove off of this boom boom nice and long right to the center I'm just gonna move this around it's amazing and under the right light it's like one of those paint the color shift paints it's a Mexican oh I'm not sure he told me but it's just like uh, some kind of Mexican stone Mexican blah 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 stone 
like color shift. This thing is just amazing. Cody Stemmler, Stones and Bones, Primitive Arts, Facebook. Do look him up. Now don't expect either of these gentlemen or people that do this fine, fine work, do not expect of them to sell these things for five or ten dollars a piece. Do not. You pay for what you get, folks. Don't look for bargains. They deserve everything they get. They're not a hundred dollars a piece, but they are more expensive and well worth it than a steel trade point because more goes into it. I can do this. <laughs> I can make steel trade points like nobody's business. I wish I was able to do stuff like this, but wishing doesn't count. Practice, time and uh, skill, creativity. Ah, on to subject two or three or five. I'm not keeping track. Elbows. This I did last night, backed it using hide glue. Using hide glue, and it's it's neat. I like using hide glue because you can get away with not even wrapping them, just the way hide glue operates. First step, first step, you have to soak the hide. While you're preparing the back, sizing the back, the hide is soaking. I roll them together, just roll them up, put them into a mug with a watered down glue solution. Yes, you heard it. I'm not just soaking them in water, I'm soaking them in gluey water. So these strips will absorb glue. They will be self-sticking in effect. Once they're set, they're in my, my little coffee mug. With the gluey water, very thin down, probably 25% of what the, what the backing um, glue will be. You don't want it to gel at room temperature, it needs to be on the other side. Take my fingers. Those two fingers, stick them in that with a little bit of dish soap um, and water and glue. I do it a little bit at a time, just like the sizing anything. The first layer, rub a section, let's say 12.25 inches of this mixture. It's damp, it's soaking in because it's thin. It's got the, the dishwashing detergent on it. Then immediately, my glue pot, the full strength glue, follow it up. And that's the, the thin stuff followed up by the full strength all the way to the end. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit. You don't have to, but I do. I let it dry a little bit so I can I can get a judge on um, how much more I have to do of sizing because sometimes the wood will just suck it up and that first sizing will just suddenly disappear and you'll just see wood as if you didn't do anything. So I will follow it up with Full strength. I'm not using this thin stuff anymore because I already have the first layer on here. Full strength. Put it on my jig. Wait a little bit till it gets tacky. Ha, 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 ha. Waiting a little bit. And this is how you do it without wrapping it. You just fuss it down in position. It's gotten tacky enough. I take my strips out. I wring them out. And I might even go so far as taking a paper towel and just kind of getting a little dryish. Lay them on there, and if it all goes to plan, those are stuck. A little bit of cajoling, a little bit of fiddling, and after maybe a half an hour of fiddling with it, boom, um, the height is on there. No wrapping whatsoever. No wrapping whatsoever. Part of it depends on how thin your height is or thick your height is, and also how long you soaked it. When you do it this way, you don't need to soak, which I never do the rawhide, overnight. You don't want it to be just totally floppy and, and stretched out. You want to make sure that um, it'll stick down there if you're doing that method. You can, of course, wrap it with gauze or wrap it with your favorite wrapping. But on this, when I've trimmed that rawhide exactly where I want it, sometimes if you wrap it, it'll shift. And when you take it off when it's dry, it's like, oh, rats. It's not even on there. That's why I like to do with the hide glue, not wrapping it. Or if I do wrap it, I wait until it's so stuck down there it's not gonna move and I can really like reef down on it. Now, unlike tight bond, <clears throat> if you were to wrap this with gauze, it's not gonna be a one-way trip for the gauze. It won't be sticking. This was used previously. It looks like a brand new thingamajigger of gauze. And it wouldn't have looked like that if I had backed this with tight bond. Now on to stuff musical. I'm not going to play because I don't want to drive somebody nuts. 
Oh, 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 free. This is going to have this sort of scheme, except it's not going to be as like flamey red on this. It's going to be more subdued. But this is going to be the general scheme of this bow. That's other news, the band in which I am currently with, end of that sentence with a preposition, I believe, um, is great. We've got a good feeling, that good vibe amongst each other. The, the bass player, really cool guy, an old hippie. The drummer is really, was, is really chill and really good. Um, we don't do covers, maybe a couple, but the, the guitarist and his girlfriend, Jeff and, and Jan, songwriters. And so I really like it that we're playing original stuff. And I also appreciate it that um, because I'm coming in with mandolin, the violin, and the viola, they're allowing me the freedom. I don't need to play the same way each time, you know, because we've got that good feeling. So it's not like that last duo, duo I was with or trio, the drummer, the, the son on keyboards, very talented. And his father, who is not going to release his claws from that young man, is going to ride his coattails. Um, they wanted it. Um, my playing to be exactly the same every time, and they had to tell me what to play, so enough of that. I like this group. I like this group. I like the freedom. We're having fun. And I also like it because um, I don't know if they're just kidding with me, but it's like, what key is a song in? Like, I don't know, because they're all not only great songwriters and musicians, but it's like, oh, it's in a key that has notes, let's just say. That is all. Thank you for watching. Happy spring. I think it's almost spring now. My mind is now going towards the preserve. I've got my employees set, which is good. Coming up with the, the summer schedule and looking forward to cleaning up the lawn because it's like a deal in a snow melt. It's like, ew, ew, looks pretty nasty. But that shall pass and it'll be a beautiful spring. Thanks for watching, all.